All right, in this video, this is the custom calendar from scratch part 11, and this is going to be the agenda slash events intro. We're finally done with the calendar. Now let's work on the events that we have down here at the bottom. We can tap on specific dates. For example, January the 18th, 2019, I have four events on this date, and then we can cycle through these to see the other events. This will change dynamically depending on what date. For example, I just tapped on January the 15th, 2019, and all I have is one event for that date. And I can't use the arrows here because there are no more events. And then if we come and click on January the 9th, we have where it shows nothing scheduled, and we can see that because we don't have a little dot for January the 9th. Now this one that you see here is the CraftCal V6, but if we come over to our custom calendar from scratch part 11, you can find these in my free components folder. I'm going to go into custom calendar from scratch part 11, and if I scroll down to the bottom, I've added all of the globals that I have mentioned over here on the left. We have event up, down, event left, right, num up, down, num left, right. Those are these four globals right here. As a matter of fact, let me just recap with you. If I go back to the root and I come to CraftCal V6 and I go over to its globals, if I come down to those globals in CraftCal V6 and I come over here and look at that calendar, what this is allowing us to do is move up the event indicator or we can move it down. We can also move it left or we can move it right. And the same applies for our numbers on our calendar themselves. Now we're gonna be discussing this later on in the series, but I wanted to point that out. That's the purpose of those four number globals. You do want to set those between negative 100 to positive 100 for that particular number globals, minimum and maximum. So going back to root, heading over into part 11, going to the globals, let's look at the rest of them. The event color that we have here, this will be the indicator color when we build it on our tutorial piece over here. The event size, that will adjust that circle shape size. Of course, you could add your own shape here, but I'm just gonna use a circle for simplistic sake. We have this text global here, view event, just set it equal to zero, and this number will dynamically change depending on the events that we're scrolling through in our calendar. So now we have this num event, and this is a text global here, and this is going to determine the number of events for a specific date on our calendar. So we can tap on a specific date, and it's going to run this code here, and it's going to determine the number of events that we have for that specific date. This obviously will change dynamically depending on where you are on the calendar. So I've already added that code in here for num event. And then our last two globals down here, row one event and other row event color. The way I've created this calendar, if you haven't noticed up until this point, row one, we have its own special set of codes, and then the remaining rows, we have a special code for those as well. Some of y'all have messaged me about trying to simplify this down into one code for all of the rows. I'm sure it can be done, but in all honesty, the inspiration for this came from the way a calendar is created in Excel. I've looked at a couple of ways that people have created calendars in Microsoft Excel, and one way that I did see that was kind of common was that some people used row one, they had a special code for that, and then the remaining rows, they had a code for that as well. And that was the inspiration I used when I created this calendar. So I'll explain these codes later on in the series, but these two codes here, these will determine the color of our event indicator. Sure, we have the color set up here, and then we also have this hide that I skipped over. Hide, we've already created that earlier in this series. But, you know, if we have an event, we want to see that event color. And if we don't have an event, we want to hide it. Well, yeah, we have those two colors set up here, but we got to have a code to determine whether it's going to be event color or hide. And that's what these two codes down here are going to cover. But when it's all said and done, there should be 36 globals in your calendar component. Yes, it's global heavy, but if you've been test running CraftCal V6, the calendar is pretty fast. It loads up each month very fast. The event indicators pop up fast. And um, yeah, and there you have it. You know, I wanted to go ahead and knock out all of these globals here. Go ahead and add that into your calendar component. And then in part 12, we will start building this thing. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.